Hey, welcome to the latest edition of the First Eight Copites podcast. This, we're doing our review show. Um, we've got Hytham, we've got Roddy, and our, um, some usual suspects in terms of Charlie, who does not want to talk about luck. And we've got Tim. Are you going to talk about luck? Maybe we can talk about luck. Okay. Um, so, uh, wow. Uh, I guess w- what happened in the last week? Um, but nothing probably that we want to talk about, but then, you know, it's been a few days now. So obviously Liverpool lost seven to two for the first time in 50 some years um, to Aston Villa on Sunday. Um, something weird going on, obviously. Um, since we last recorded an episode, we also played Arsenal in the Carabao slash EFL Cup. Um, and... You know, mixed feelings, I'm sure, about uh, not progressing in a tournament that's going to have a lot of unnecessary games going forward. Um, Rian Brewster left. Um, and we've got Everton coming up. So a lot of kind of stuff to discover. Let's start with... Should we start with Sunday? We'll go around. Your, your kind of thoughts three, four days on about... Losing 7-2 to Aston Villa. The same Aston Villa who almost got relegated last season. So, as you're a guest, Roddy, I'm going to start with you. What do you think? <laughs> okay, so I think there's a number of things to go out there for discussion. Um, one is Leicester won the league after being nearly relegated the season before. So, you put that out as a marker a few years ago, right? Yeah. And I'm not suggesting that Villa are going to win the league, by the way. Um, well, that's Everton, obviously. <laughs> well, the Blues think they're going to win the league. Yeah. They do. They do. The, um, the, the other thing for me is it's very intriguing this playing in front of no fans and, and how teams seem to sort of like suddenly feel no pressure or the players feel no pressure to try certain things, etc., and have a real go. We are the current champions. Everybody's going to play hard every week at us. Clearly, a, an individual error. Well, a couple of errors right on the first move with Adrian sticking it out to the, the right and then Gomez not just going after the ball and backing off. Um, and I, after that, I think Klopp got it right. They just completely lost the plot. They were second for everything. The Charlie's point about the luck piece, to me, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And they, they just did not look like they were up for the game at all on Sunday. A bit like the Watford game last season. It was kind of bizarre to me. They just crumbled. And it wouldn't have mattered... I, I actually said at one point to our members, if they get a corner, they should bring the goalkeeper up from the corner because he'll probably score as well. You know, and it, <laughs> it was like, pull the goalie. Um, so, I mean, that, that, I, I just think it's, it's a one-off. Um, the worst thing for Klopp, of course, and, and, and the, sort of like the enigma for all of us is it's an international break. And then, well, for us at least, it's 4.30 in the morning, but a lunchtime kickoff in a derby against a team who's sitting pretty at the top of the league makes it more intriguing. Wow, a lot to, lot to go out there. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I do think there's something to be said about the fact that the team will be back together again for another, what, at least seven days, and like 48 hours at max before the, the next game. So, so Hytham, what was your take on um, the weekend's strange result? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was obviously tough to watch. Just, uh, you know, after the first goal, um, you know, just watching the first goal go in and, and the mistake by the goalkeeper. And then you're like, okay, so, you know, it happens. It's happened before um, so many times. Even Allison was guilty of mistakes a few times. Uh, Van Dyke himself. So I, I didn't really, you know, uh, get down until maybe the third goal. And at that point, you know, I was like, okay, so this is over. Um, there's no way we're going to come back from that. Um, or I was just doubting our ability to get back in the game. Um, and then it just went downhill from there. And it, it, was, it was shocking to me to the point where I was just, uh, you know, it felt like I was dreaming, basically. I, I was going through a nightmare. Um, so after the match, you know, I was not feeling okay i was uh a little bit down but i think w- what got me out of it is i just compared compared it to 
the the last meaningful well it wasn't really meaningful but our loss to Stoke um, a few years ago uh, CVG's last match um, and that 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 just felt different it was hard to watch because it was everyone knew it was Stevie's last match and it was Stoke uh, that was killing us so it felt different in this one you know it just it, it just felt like a fluke yeah. you know so I wasn't you know. I, I, what I'm trying to say is I, I just, I got over it, you know, pretty quickly. Um, it, it hasn't lingered. Um, I think the next match, it's going to be a tough one. Um, I don't even know if we're going to win or draw, but even if we lose, which I hope it doesn't happen, I don't think it's going to be in the same fashion. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, so the, the the consoling factor I had, because I think the Empire Rock did a thing about like, how did you cope with Liverpool losing and the answers range from like, I went drinking, like I, I made myself some of my favorite food, you know, I ignored the whole thing. Uh, but but mine, my default is, let me look at the stats. And if you look at the stats, this was a close game. You know, their uh, expected goals was not that much higher than ours. And, and only, in fact, our expected goals matched theirs until about the 80th minute when they had all those crazy chances at the very mm -hmm. end. So, um but yeah, it, it there's, there's like a, there's probably a, a like a, a, a like the life cycle of grief kind of thing that, that we probably all need to map like our experience of that somehow matches up to this game. And the thing, uh, just really quickly, the thing that really made it, like I say, as if I were dreaming, uh, is the fact that I was laughing so hard at United, um, just you know. Uh, <laughs> the, the match before that one and you know I'm just like this can't be happening to us too yeah. Um, yeah. so it was kind of like uh, okay you just need to calm down <laughs> right, and hum humble yourself basically think about Man City fans right I mean they drew against Leeds and must have been going oh throwing away the points yep. then Leicester get thumped then Man United get thumped then we get thumped actually it's not a bad weekend <laughs> <laughs> I guess the big difference is United is shit and we're not you know, like, yeah, yeah, you could see that United result coming, right? <laughs> so Char Charlie, what, what, where are you now with the uh, the, the, the Sunday's game? It's uh, it's the first game for a while that I've watched alone, sitting at home. I just I just decided, like, okay, you know, need to just kind of relax and and watch at home, and and it was surreal. And, and I mean, I was almost hysterical about you know, really two thirds of the way through. I'm just like what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what is going on. Whatever. Look, if you're going to lay an egg, you might as well lay a really big one and, uh, and, you know, get something to learn from. And just, you know, other than the, the left-hand side, I guess, Robbo, <clears throat> Genie and Jota. Yeah. Other than that, everyone, I mean, of course, Mo uh, with two, two really good strikes, but um, you know, look, other than that, it was just it was just a, a comedy of errors. I the biggest shame to come for it was a few knocks on comp, on the confidence of some of these players who could really use uh, the opposite. Certainly, Adrian uh, Joe Gomez, who had one of his best games against you know Arsenal the week before, oh, had a definitely one to forget. And yeah. Jack Grealish keyed on that side the whole time. Jack Grealish was really very, very impressive. So, so to see our guys, a couple of our guys take a bit of a confidence knock was the really, the real shame. But yeah, I do. I would not want to be Everton right now. I would not want to be Everton because I, you know, and, and a lot of people have said, oh, the worst thing that could happen is an international break right after that. Yeah, for an emotionally fragile team, I agree. For this team, I actually disagree. And each one of them is going to be stewing, no matter where they are, stewing and stewing for two weeks. And and the subject of their wrath is going to be the bitters and we're going to smash them. I really think that we, I really think that we're going to come out all guns blazing. And, and I do, I do not think that it's going to be, you know, um, to their advantage at all. I do hope you're right. I think there's a couple of things going on there, though. Is one is they need to go back to playing, in my view, the way they did last season with Adrian, which is like, oh, he's not the guy now, so we need to be a bit smarter about what balls we play back to him. 
Yeah, yeah. they mentioned that in the Anfield wrap, uh, you know, and, and that's, look, it, it, it's not a huge adjustment that needs to happen. It just needs to be a, you know, like the, the first ball that what Robbo sent to Adrian where he had to chest it down and then, uh, don't do that. Just don't do that. It, it's, not, it's, it's not Ali back there. So, and, and, and he probably realized that the split second after he played it, that probably not the right thing to do, but then Jogo was out of position and yeah, look, it was just, I, I didn't put that all down to, to Adrian. Um, you know, it, it, it just, there needs to be a slight adjustment there. And, and yeah, look, you adjust your line a bit because of it. And, and Adrian needs to position himself a bit better. Sure. But it's not it's not unexpected. It was just it was a perfect storm. So yeah, I, I'm not I'm not terribly concerned. I got to say. I'm going to go to Tim, but I have another theory actually, which is the problem with him playing on the League Cup teams is the defense, the like the backup defense plays a lot deeper. Mm. So therefore, Adrian saves up a lot of shots. He doesn't do a lot of the sweep and keeper stuff that he ends up doing with like the big boys. Um, and when Allison was injured on Saturday. That made it really hard um, then for them to readjust to like playing with him because the guy they've been playing with is quite happy with them being like 40 yards up the field. Let's just hope it's closer to four than six weeks for Ali, huh? Yeah. <laughs> or they go back to last season and go like, oh, yeah, we didn't pass to him much. Right. That, remember that now. So. Right. It worked out you... okay for us the first, what, was that six, seven, eight, nine games he played? He did. Yeah. So, Tim, what's your, what's your take on the weekend? I feel like you guys are sort of upbeat. Like I feel like I'm always Debbie Downer on this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Go ahead. I, uh, so I, God help me, I watched back the first half today. I couldn't make it through the second half. Um, yeah. But the first goal, obviously, Adrian's fault. Like wrap it off. Could Joe could have recovered a little bit better, but that was just a, a dumb move by Adrian. But looking at Ollie Watkins' in second goal, I don't know how it goes in. Like he's basically going down it looks like almost like he's trying to take the the like the ankles out of a a defense player and instead he hits the ball and it goes top corner looks beautiful um but when you watch it in slow motion it's like that he didn't mean to do that like that's the one where he he'll tell everyone on the team that he meant to do it but he clearly didn't um so heitham was saying that like he didn't expect to come back once it was what three one at the half i was still thinking yeah, we can get back in this. We can salvage. Yeah, we can get a point out of this. Um, and I feel like the team quit, um, which is kind of like Klopp's point of like losing the script. But I just feel like they got to a certain point where they were like, you know what? We're not getting bounces our way. What was it? Three of the seven were deflections yeah. that the keeper had no chance on. Um, so, yeah, it, it felt to me – very reminiscent of leg one against Atletico in Champions League last year, where it was very clear very early in the game that they have they had the key to our safe and they knew exactly how to beat that high line and they knew how to get behind our defense. And instead of adjusting, we just kind of said, well, we're going we're gonna to run and gun. We're going to try to outscore you. And we just didn't. Um, so to me, I feel like we could have made better adjustments at the half. Um, we could have switched system. We could have, as you were saying, like drop the defense back a little deeper. Mm-hmm. We could have done something. I feel like instead of saying we're just going to try to save our goal differential, we're gonna we're gonna mitigate the damage here. We just kind of said, you know, we're gonna try our best to get some more goals on the board, um, and it didn't work out very well. Uh, I was a bit surprised that Klopp didn't try to change something. Yeah. Um, or, and what he did change was not the changes that I thought he would make. Like when he brought uh, Taki on for, for Nabi, I kind of thought, oh, we're going to go to like a, a double pivot. We're going to try that system out. And it, it didn't look like we actually changed form at all. Um, yeah. Another game where we probably missed Hendo. Yeah. Oh. What? There's been lots of points made of that on like social media, like how he organizes the the, the team on the field. Um, like there's only so much yelling the, the, the coach can do from the side. Um, so I think there's something to that. And I know we don't want to talk about luck, but we had bad luck in that game. 
Um, oh, we had absolutely bad luck. Yeah. You got three of those deflections where it goes from one corner to the other corner. There's nothing to put that down to other than bad luck. You know, I mean, poor execution in not, not committing to the block, but that doesn't happen three times in a game. Right. And the, the interesting thing I had shared earlier, um, Andrew Beasley put something on Twitter that was interesting, is that uh, so far this season, so what are we, four, four matches in, Liverpool have conceded the fourth fewest number of shots in the Premier League, but we've conceded the fourth most shots on target. So 38% of Premier League shots have been on target this season, but Liverpool has 61% of shots have been on target against us. So we've got bad luck so far this season. And the, the one thing I'd say is I don't think the Grealish goal was, was actually his goal. I think it was going wide. I've looked at it a couple of times because at the time I was looking at it, thinking, that's going – anyway. But It's, right. it's this whole – uh, you know, it's it's this whole the the core goes the uh, the way of the Englishman, right? <laughs> Further to Paul Tompkins' uh, story about uh, so, so theory about penalties. And I stuff. don't know. Someone's just got to pee on some gold posts. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, okay. Come on. <laughs> so uh, let's so, uh, just one last point. So uh, there are three factors I think not a lot of people are talking about. Um, so uh, transform. It's been um, not, you know, the same trend um, since the start of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that? Like? Keita hasn't been playing like he's, you know, he was playing uh, the end of last season. Um, and and the third one, you know, in my own opinion, is is Jota. You know, he's he's great. He played good against uh, when he scored the goal uh, in the uh, was it the Carabao Cup or? He's also he scored. Arsenal, right. But he's still, I think he still needs time to just get used to the system and all of that stuff. So um, if Mane w- w- was there, you know, obviously um, Allison wasn't there. I-, I think the outcome would have been um, a little different than what, what and Thiago. I mean, Thiago looks phenomenal when he came on. I mean, he- and Thiago too, yeah. yeah. Like a different class kind of player. Mm-hmm. So, so let's, let's go look forward to... Um, I guess, 10 days' time. Because I, I do think you have a point about Jota. I saw a photo of one of the passes that Villa were able to make, like with nobody around the player playing the ball forward over our back line. And Jota was pressing somebody who, like in the center of the field, and the guy playing the pass was on the right-hand side. So I do, I do think there's something about him adjusting to our style of play. But I do also think that the next game... There's a lot of people coming back, which can make a lot of difference to to how we play. Not to lead the conversation, but um, Everton. If they don't get COVID by then. Well, you know, that could be a factor. But um, in terms of like the players who are like, doing the international tour stuff, but we definitely have three players coming back. We have Thiago, uh, we have Hendo, we have Matip. Um yeah. Bloody, what, what yeah look, I got to say that, look, sorry, further that, Jota, I don't think, look, he's fit in fairly well so far and he's been doing the work. And in a lot of cases, he's back in positions where Mane would track back to. So, yeah, look, some fight, fine tuning there. TAA had a bit of a shocker, but I don't think he's been down all year. But uh, but I think Kate has been good, really. I mean, he, no one was really great last game, but this whole season, that's what, his fifth straight start, Kater. I think he's been good, and I think he's proven that he's probably someone who can easily easily be slotted into this midfield. Um, you know, when you're missing someone like Hendo, or you know, you know, you want to rotate it a little bit. I, yeah, I got to say, I, I, I'm 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 surprised that that you, Hytham, you think that Kaita hasn't hasn't been anything other than pretty impressive this season. Well, I I just I I go back to again his form at the end of last season, and I I felt like he contributed more. Um, you know, I just, I, I haven't seen as much so far this season. Um, he's great. Don't get me wrong. But for some, some reason, I just, I feel like he regressed a little bit, not too much. Um, and obviously it could be whatever. Um, uh, maybe he just didn't want to travel for international duty or something like that. But, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, I feel like he's not the same player that, uh, he was uh, post um, the COVID 
pause. So a couple of things that, that probably height them the that we've been exposed to is we had uh, Simon Simon Brundish right who kept insisting that like Kater's stats were much better than uh, everyone was talking about him like way like even before like the lockdown like he's great on pressing he's great on like forward runs uh, and I think one of the things that's happened is in this period he's doing much more of a like a Wijnaldum kind of thing uh, than he is doing the Cater kind of thing and the Wijnaldum thing is you block passing lanes you do stuff that the, that the coaching staff wants you don't necessarily like show up on the stats chart like your you know Kevin De Bruyne for example yeah, yeah he's been a part of the Liverpool Liverpool midfield and yeah say for Alcantara then that's I think what we're gonna have to expect from him, you know did you see the um, so this is a slight detour? There was this, this probably should be the ending item, right? But uh, Marco Gruich signed for Porto, Porto, Porto. Porto. yeah, yeah. And Porto uh, introduced him as like this is a magnificent signing for us. Uh, he just couldn't get in the midfield that midfield because they're so magnificent. Just saying, yeah, yeah. um, that's a cool. quality player. He that's was good. Cool. What's that, Roddy? I said he was great against Arsenal. I mean, he, you know, yeah. his ball control is phenomenal. Man of the match, really. And what, Hertha Berlin was the club he was with last season, I think. Past and two he kept saying, he's the best midfielder to ever play for our club. Prove me wrong. Right? I saw some guys sitting there with a cup of coffee. Prove me wrong, you know. So I think he's I, good. I'm going to switch the conversation to our kind of – we have two more topics. But, but looking forward, Everton – what are you thinking about formation, our kind of our mindset going into that? Um, how confident are you? Let's we'll start with Roddy. So, I, I think I believe that Klopp kept the team back on Sunday and made them watch every mistake that they'd committed, right? Um, I do think the 10 days doesn't, I don't think that helps us in some ways. I totally agree with Charlie, though, that um, they'll be itching to get back at it. Um, the question is, what does Klopp do when he, when he gets them all together? Do you do you sh replay the Villa game and get them all fired up again? Or do you move on in a more positive channel and just say, look, we're a really good team. This is what we're good at. This is our strengths. Here's where their strengths are. And just do his usual thing. I think um, I I'm actually glad that we're not playing them at Goodison with a full crowd. Because I actually think if Everton had gone to go ahead with an empty stadium, I don't, I don't think that matters that much. I think there would have been a whole different ball game if it had been the tight Goodison Park and we go one nothing down and then the players all... It really depends on how their mentality is on the day. Um, I, I'm, I'm the proverbial optimist and believer in hard work produces our own luck. So I actually think we'll come out and perform extremely well on the day. I love it. Let's leave it there. No, no. That's high <laughs> Your perspective. I think I, I mentioned uh, a little bit of it. I think they're going to have uh, a way better, you know, um, match than what they had this past Sunday. Uh, I just, I, I worry about um, Ancelotti. Um, even, you know, going back to when he was at Napoli, when we played them uh, a few, a couple of times in the Champions League, they always just, they were a thorn or on our side. Um, yeah. I think we beat them maybe once out of four matches or something like that. I can't even remember. Um, so just from a tactics standpoint, uh, that's something to look out for. Um, I just, I, you know, I think they're, I agree with Charlie and, and Roddy. They're going to come out gloves off and, and I hope that's what's going to happen. Um, Result-wise, I'm not sure. Um, you know, obviously, I want them to win all the time, uh, but I try to be realistic at times. Um, so uh, I think possibly if we don't, I, I don't think we're going to lose, but most likely for me, it's going to be a draw. Wow. Okay. I, I, I'm thinking about those Napoli games, and I was actually at the one victory we had over them. And we should have scored a ton of goals, interestingly. And they ended up having that chance at the very end where Alisson Allison, yeah. Milic. Um, I, 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 just, 
I'm hoping we've been very unfortunate against Ancelotti teams rather than him having something that he can like deal with. But, um, yeah. yeah. Even going back to the match after the restart, wasn't it the first match? Um, but he's just, uh, I don't know. He's, I mean, the Derby is a Derby all the time. You know, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a different type of match, but um, I felt like, you know, he just, he he tweaks things um, when he plays um, us um, in the same kind of way. Um, I haven't really got gotten into the you know uh, formations and all of that stuff, but somehow he just knows how to you know place his balls and and, and um, irritates us. I think he may have a challenge actually this time because the previous like in after restarts they played like banks of four. Like they were all about defending, and um, this time he's not got a formation that like looks like a like banks of four defending. So I kind of wonder whether we'll have more chances as a consequence. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so Tim, looking forward, what do you think? Um, I think it's going to look a lot like the Leeds game. Um, like you you just said that they're not playing two banks of four. Yeah. I think they're probably going to play a 4-3-3. Um, so I think it's going to be back and forth. Um, I, I don't want to praise Everton, but they look good this season. Um, so I guess I just did, but I don't want to. Um, <laughs> but Calvert-Lewin, uh, I can't well, stand. You're in England shirt, so I think you're obliged to praise some Everton well, players. So. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me as – a not superstitious person that's superstitious is my my answer would have been off the bat like I hope it's a nighttime start we start Divic Origi who like is a vampire because he scores after dark every game um that line that we played against them um in December last uh where we had Mane and Origi and Shakiri there I would just go with that again but it's as we already referenced it's a, it's a lunchtime match there um, so I think that throws off any kind of good fortune we've had from that past thing. And I, I don't know if changing form um, that, as we've done against the the four four two that they've played the last few times in the, in previous seasons, I think we've gone to like a four four two three one against them to kind of break through that. And so I don't know if that'll work this year. So I, I think it may just be um, – me falling in line with everyone else and saying we're just going to play as full strength as we can play and we're just going to go head to head and we're we're going to try to outscore them which i want to watch uh, <laughs> and i'm with Hytham. i don't know if we're going to win but i hope it's at least more fun to watch than sunday was because that was god awful you know what you know what could guarantee a win uh if we play the kids from last year the team that beat them <laughs> Because so, <laughs> Jones should definitely start is one of yeah. the Adrian in goal too. Well, he's going to be in goal, so he did. But, yeah. but like well, a maybe the line because Adrian's not great with the high line, right? Maybe <laughs> Cayman will start. Who knows? Who will start? Cayman Keller. Oh, I mean, I did think about that briefly on Sunday. I have to tell you, I did think about that. Um, so, Charlie, what's your take on Everton? Uh, yeah, like I said, I I wouldn't envy uh, Everton's position, but um, I also think that I, not knowing a whole lot about the psyche of Everton and so on, but the fact that they're kind of riding high on, on top of the league and we're fantastic and look at look at Liverpool, they're so shit, they just got smashed by Villa. I feel like that'll probably probably come back to 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 hurt them. Um, you know, yep. I said I, I expect them to us to smash them, and, and you know, not necessarily a you know a seven-two scoreline in our favor. Uh, but I think we'll just dominate them. I, I think we'll take our opportunities. I think our our defense will, you know, take it as a personal affront. Uh, you know, the last uh, scoreline, and uh, they will be absolutely, you know steely resolved to 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 make up for that um so look uh, you know i'd be interested to know what Klopp does i really wouldn't be surprised to see tiago in there to to try to you know throw a cat amongst the pigeons with uh, with whatever um 
whatever the manager wants to do, whatever, whatever Carlo wants to do. Um, but yeah, it, look, it, it, the, the, the way they've been playing probably makes a bit of a, more of a conundrum for Carlo than it does for us in that, wow, it'd be a shame to just do this, you know, two banks of four when we're playing so well and we got all this go forward, uh, you know, working out for us. So uh, it, it'll be fascinating, but yeah, it's, it's going to take forever for that game to get here. No, you have to be optimistic, guys, because if we win four nothing, we actually go back to the top of the league. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, You're depending right. on what Villa does, we don't care about Villa. <laughs> <laughs> They're perfect, and they got a healthy goal differential. <laughs> Do we, we play the one less? Right, we play first, so I think we're, you know. In, in any event, it's going to be. So if Liverpool win on 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 the Saturday morning, we'll be top of the league, right? That's the story. Well, we'll be equal top unless we win four or nothing, and then we will be top. Yeah. Oh, we have to uh, come back to me in May and tell me who's top of the league, and then I'll care. Okay. Or seven two, we'll do it. We'll still be on top of the league. So here we go. That would be a good hey, score. Like yeah. That. We obviously, it's Sandy Brown. That's a reference for the kids um, to uh, to be playing on uh, on Saturday. No one gets that, do they? He, he, he was an Everton player who scored a bunch of own goals against Liverpool. Mm. Uh, Is that right? Okay. Come on. Oh. Sandy Byrne. There you go. Going to close it with one thing you saw about Liverpool this week Do you want to share. Raise your hand if you... Oh, Charlie's already got something. I know I said I wasn't going to say it, but Martin Atkinson is a total dickhead. <laughs> so, what you may also want to know is Paul Tompkins <laughs> published a free article in the last couple of days. Yeah. About Make sure you don't, you know, offend him in in uh, in, in your uh, your books like Stevie did because he'll forever hold a grudge and be completely uh, so biased so, against you. So, so you know what, Martin Atkinson. Well, I'm pretty. That sure doesn't mean peace. Well, that doesn't what, mean peace. What you should know if you're watching this is he's given Liverpool one penalty in the last 23 games he's refereed, which is statistically completely off the charts. Do you uh, know how much that one penalty hurt him? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> His money got clattered somewhere at some game, uh, is what I read. Anyway, Paul Tompkins, like, it's, it's totally worth looking at the article about the amount of penalties he gave against us and the few penalties given for us. And by the way, John Moss gets a good reference in there too. Apparently mm. he's given more penalties at Anfield or in the cop end at Anfield than any other referee in the last 10 years. And all of them have been to Spurs. Yeah, Tottenham. Yeah. Okay. But he has a good vantage point from 30 yards behind the play. <laughs> yeah. Continuing the theme. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> so, so, Hytham, what do you got? So I watched the uh, Liverpool women's match uh, today against United and watched them uh, beat United women. Uh, and, and, and I was basking in, in the glory uh, of us beating United. Um, but one um, aspect of the match that I really enjoyed watching was um, our winger, Rinsola, number 10, um, and how she was just you know, she did what she wanted to do. She she wanted to pass by a couple of defenders. She did it. Uh, it was it was really fun to watch. With United having to, uh, Tobin Heath and uh, Kristen Press, who are you know World Cup winners, um, and, and you know I thought I thought the Liverpool women who are in you know the second uh, championship now, um, I thought they did well. They um, you know. Um, represented us to the fullest so i enjoyed that i so if you didn't see that i think you can still see it back on lfc tv uh, it was actually it was on youtube uh liverpool uh, streaming it on youtube but yeah i have lfc tv too and i watched them there they, so so the, the, they clearly were like up against it a part of the game but they also showed some really good insights into like how to beat a team like that anyway worth watching Never bad for any Liverpool team to beat United 3 1. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so Ronnie, what what one thing that you called out this week? 
So I um I, I get home and uh, on on Sunday like we all did sort of yeah. ahead um and no, no political comments but I, I read the I read the New York Times but only at the weekend um and it's one of these things that invariably starts off on a Sunday and it's still there next Saturday <laughs> it takes me that long to get to it but actually on Sunday I actually read the paper and I don't know if any of you saw the article but there's a whole article about Liverpool um and how all the pre- is always on Joe Gomez because nobody wants to attack Van Dijk. And, and so it was really interesting to read that after the game and then go back to the game and go, that's exactly what happened, right? Every single <laughs> move is <laughs> yeah. And the article was not suggesting that Joe Gomez is a bad player because he's not. He's a quality player. He's breaking into the England squad. He's learning a hell of a lot. He's only a young kid but that he is likely to be in a position where he has to defend far more times than Van Dyke does. Therefore, yeah. statistically, he will make more mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. We, we've mentioned that before here. Our right side versus our left side, especially without Henderson in the midfield on that right, protecting TAA, helping out Mo, who isn't as good as get, at getting back as mm-hmm. Sadio or Jota, I got to say. Um, you know, it, it's it's tough, and then with Jogo there being being attacked, especially by Grealish, it, that's rough. Yeah, yeah, that's a really insightful observation. So, thanks to close. Um, I, it's the thing I'm most excited what about. What about you've left him hanging? I know he's got an England shirt on, oh. but you left him hanging there. Paul. So right? you're going to talk he, about uh, Mane, Thiago, and Hendo being available. Go I'm on. not. No, no, no. No, I had so many things and nobody took any of them. It's kind of, I don't know if it's disappointing. I, I had like my one, two, and three option. Um, oh. I'm going to leave three. transfers out of it. I'm going to leave the fact that Liverpool's never going to wear that shirt behind you again. I'm going to leave them out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say the thing that I liked this week was the story about uh, Mo Salah stopped to fuel his car on the way home <laughs> from, uh, from training. And saw some some local kids giving some stick to a, a homeless guy and stepped in and said, hey, you could be there one day yourself. Gave the guy 100 pounds and left and they left him alone. And I was like, this is a story I needed to see after a 7-2 loss. Mm-hmm. Because this is a, the reason why I support Liverpool. Because they've got players like that. And it's not about a win. It's about decent humans. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, not a, it's not about birthday parties, huh? <laughs> no, it's not. No, the reference to Yaya Toure. I'm assuming. <laughs> no, the, the the reference is actually to uh, who was it? A uh, Chelsea player who had a surprise birthday party. Tammy and- uh, oh, Tammy Abraham. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. We yeah. didn't realize how many people were going to be there because it was uh, a surprise. <laughs> yeah. So usually I pass over Tim because he has so many good things. He overshadows that whatever I'm going to mention. So did um, I steal it? I should no, no. I should probably leave it there. One thing I do want to actually, there's a ton of things. I did want to talk about Thiago, Hendo, and Mane being available on, on week on Saturday, which I think will help us win. But this is what I want to talk about. Peter Hooten was on our podcast like two weeks ago, and it, this arrived today. And this book is awesome. It's like this heavyweight. Like you put this on your coffee table. It, it talks about a lot of the things that happened in in. Liverpool between the 60s and like the late 80s. Um, well worth a read. A lot of iconic photographs too. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. If you listen to the podcast, he talks about some of them, but absolutely awesome. So not quite as cool as Tim's comment, but anyway, Peter. Uh, you're in the human, Paul. <laughs> yeah. You know Mo Salah, that's for sure. Yeah, seriously, Mo where's Salah, a bit of Mo Salah what? love back there, Paul? He scored two goals and you got Mane out there. He didn't even play on the weekend. So I was feeling like you know, now now everyone, no one's saying Salah's not the greatest player ever. So I felt like Dadio needed a bit of a mention. So, so you jumped <laughs> off that bandwagon. All right, got it. Um, it for me, Sadio, Sadio and Mo have never been a bandwagon. It's always been. <laughs> you got to choose one or the other. And if you choose one, it means you hate the other. Haven't you seen Twitter? <laughs> Come on. On that note, we probably need to end. Buddy, thank you very much for joining us. Hytham, thank you very much. 
You're welcome. Being Pleasure. Being more than an able deputy for Sean. <laughs> Couldn't face the audience with the. I just. I, I hope I made him proud. That's all. When he <laughs> when he watches when you watch on, I hope I made you proud. You set the bar very high if he's to ever return. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thank Absolutely. you.